What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Joseph Cassius. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Joseph Cassius. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Joseph Cassius. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Dr. Joseph Cassius and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Arid Cream Deodorant, America's largest selling deodorant. Don't be half safe, be completely safe. Use Arid Cream Deodorant to be sure. And now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Jane Meadows. Next, Mr. Don Amici. Then, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> All right, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit for the evening? I, Dr. Joseph Cassius, quit school and joined the Marines when I was 16 years old. At present, I am a lieutenant in the United States Army. I am also a professional wrestler. I have fought more than 500 professional wrestling bouts, and I won the world's championship in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in 1954. Despite my active military and wrestling careers, I managed to complete my college education with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and last month I received my Ph.D. in psychology. Signed, Dr. Joseph Cassius. Panel, you heard these three, I think you'll agree, stalwart gentlemen, all claim to be Dr. Joseph Cassius, Lieutenant Dr. Wrestler. All set, gentlemen? All right, then let's start with Jane Meadows. Jane, please. Number two, what is the ego? Well, the ego is the uh, factor that lies between the superego and the id. That's what we're all suffering from, huh? Uh, number one, who is Dr. Rose Franflau? Dr. Rose Flan Franzblau is a uh, psychiatrist. And number three, who is Eric Fromm? He was an exponent of fraud. And number two, what in wrestling is the Flying Dutchman hold? Flying Dutchman hold? Yes. I don't know. Do you know number one? I can't think of it offhand. Number three, would you know? Not the Flying Dutchman. Uh, number two, who's the famous Argentinian barefooted wrestler? Antonino Rocca. Uh, number one, what is the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist? A uh, psychologist is a uh, PhD in the field of psychology, and a psychiatrist is an MD who takes a year of postgraduate work in the field of psychi uh, psychology, psychiatry, excuse me. Uh-huh. Don Amici, number two, where did, you uh, where did you lose your title? I didn't lose my title, I won the title. Do you still have the title? Yes, I do. Uh, number three, uh, uh, to whom did you lose the title? Didn't lose the title. You retired undefeated? No. You're still active? I have the title. Uh, number, uh, two, where did you go to a boot camp for the Marines? El Toro, California. Uh, number, uh, one, where did you, uh, where did you intern? Uh, I haven't done my internship yet. Number three, where did you intern? I haven't done my internship yet. Uh, number uh, two, what was the title of your thesis for your doctorate? Uh, health and Physical Training for the American Youth of High School Age. Kitty Carlisle, please. Number one, what was the subject of your thesis? Uh, the effects of self-defense training on the personality. The effects of what? Self-defense training on the personality. Uh, number three, what did you say Dr. Fromm was? An exponent of who? Fraud. Fraud? Freud. Number three, Freud. uh... Freud, he just corrected. Would That's you correct. be good enough to tell me, um, well, the people that you work on, uh, do they lie down? You mean wrestling or in... <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, either one. <laughs> All right, either one. <laughs> They're known as canvas oh. bags. <laughs> Number one, um, Tom asked a question when we had a wrestler on a while back, and I'd like you to give me the answer. What is the difference in starting between intercollegiate wrestling and professional wrestling? Well, they're actually both the same. They both start out from a corner. 
They both start out from a corner. Yes. Uh, number two. Tom Poston, please. Uh, thank you, Pud. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Cassius. Yon Cassius. Uh, has a lean and hungry look. Shows even Will Shakespeare can be wrong. Look at those husky fellows. Over there. <laughs> uh, number three, as a uh, psychologist, would you tell us what is a synapse? A synapse? Are you sure that that's the correct pronunciation? I don't know. What do you think, number two? Is that the correct pronunciation? I'm not sure. Number one, what is a synapse? Can you tell us? Uh, it has to do with the... Uh, uh, the connection between uh, neurons. Thank you. Uh, number one... Between what? Ah. I thought it was an outline of a story. <laughs> <laughs> That's a synopsis. <laughs> uh, number one, what does a hat pin mean to a professional wrestler? Well, it would have to do with the, uh, uh, let's say, someone in the audience that would have a hat pin that enjoys piercing the... Uh, Certain Exposed parts of <laughs> Well, that's it. Time to vote on that. That's a good time to stop, I think, to get the point. Without consultation, will you please mark your ballot now? And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, the team of challenges will get, as usual, $250 for every incorrect vote. Are we all marked? Yeah. Panel, everybody marked? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jane, for whom did you vote? Uh, well, I didn't vote for number one because I think that uh, intercollegiate wrestling and professional wrestling start differently. Number two is my vote because number three pronounced Freud in a very peculiar fashion. I'm probably wrong, but it's number two is my vote. Okay, Don? I voted for number two uh, also. He seemed to know the, the uh, title of his thesis uh, uh, quite well and also the, uh, the mispronunciation of uh, Freud. Okay, Kitty, what about your vote? I voted for number two. Um, unless Tom has misled me on the way that darn wrestling starts. Uh, <laughs> oh, <wait>. Well... <laughs> Tom, what do you think is the real one? Well, you, you know, uh, it's, it's possible since uh, Mr. Cassius is a professional wrestler that you're he voting might for number not one, have right? known... Uh, What's that, bud? You're what voting, is it? You're what do you want, number sir? one. I wanted to get it recorded up there. You're voting for number one. Yes, I... Well, I hold you personally no. responsible. Yes, I well, I voted for number two because, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, his uh, answers toward the end got really pretty good, uh, number one. Yeah. Well, we'll see, anyway. Okay, yes, Russell, we'll... Maybe he doesn't know about the amateur uh, rules. All right, there you have it. Or should I say, there you have id. The votes are in, the minds are made up, and we'll find out how well we did. Master psychologist that we all try to be, let's discover now as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real lieutenant, Dr. Wrestler. So will the real Dr. Joseph Cassius please stand up? No. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, dear. We'll have questions in just a minute, Kitty. First, let's find out about number two. Would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? Yes, my name is Hank Garrett. I'm from New York, and I'm a nightclub comedian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which he gets from that, the pallor or the build, one or the other. Uh, number three, your correct name, please, and what you do. My name is Andy Robustelli. I'm with the New York football giants. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Kitty, you had a question, I believe. Dr. Cassius, how did, why didn't you know the difference between intercollegiate and, and uh, professional wrestling? Well, uh, there is actually no difference in the starting, but uh, after it's proceeded, after the first three minutes, if there is no takedown or no result, the coin is tossed to see who is on top and who is on bottom on the ground. I thought they started from uh, up, uh, standing up in, in professional and... and uh, also in amateur wrestling. Well, I would have to debate this later, I'm afraid. Our time is gone. We've got to check up I'm the score here. Team. And in doing so, we find that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Arid. Not a bad evening's entertainment, gentlemen. Thanks so much for being with us. On your way out, you'll find a year's supply of rides in St. Lather for each of you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> now, panel, our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My 
My name is Fujiko Asakawa. What is your name, please? My name is Fujiko Asakawa. What is your name, please? My name is Fujiko Asakawa. Again, will you follow along with your copies of affidavits, panel? I, Fujiko Asakawa, have been an actress and a model of oriental clothes. I have also been a registered nurse. I took my nurse's training at Fordham Hospital. While attending Fordham University, I met my husband, who was a civil engineering student and a yo-yo expert. He taught me the yo-yo, and I, too, became an expert. I have traveled through Cuba, Mexico, and the United States, giving exhibitions as the Women's World Yo-Yo Champion. Signed, Fujiko Asakawa. Now, panel, three very pretty young ladies, I think you'll agree, claiming to be Fujiko Asakawa, women's world's yo-yo champion. You all set, ladies? Ready to play our game? Okay, then let's start this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom, please. Thank you, bud. All right. Nurse, number one, who is the real Dr. Joseph Cassius? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was the number one last <laughs> game. <laughs> you really did, though. Uh, all right, number one, uh, tell me, uh, what's the difference between being on staff at a hospital and uh, having staff? Well, uh, you mean nurses you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, as a regular uh, registered nurse is a different hut, which means uh, after graduate uh, school, put on a band on, band on and hat, and a badge on. That's different. I see. Did you hear my question, number three? Number three, did you hear my question? Yes. Could you answer it, please? <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. You What's the difference between uh, being on staff at a hospital and having staff? Well, being on staff is more or less like being um, under a head nurse, and having a staff is being a head nurse. Jane Meadows, please. And uh, number two, there's a drug that I could give you to find out if you're the real Fujiko. What is the name of this drug? What is the name of it? Uh, what do you mean? The drug. Oh, well, that's uh, sodium pentothal. Um, number one, yo-yo sounds like a Japanese word to me. No, it isn't. This uh, comes from Philippines. Then yo-yo means go and come back. Yo-yo. Yes. What do with our hands? That's the Philippine language. Number three, uh, where did you model the oriental clothes? The penthouse gallery. Uh, where is the penthouse gallery, number two? The penthouse gallery is located on 15 West 55th. Don Amici. John? Number one, uh, who was president of Fordham when you went to school there? Uh, in nursing school? No, president of the university. Oh, that was um, uh, Father McGenry. Number two, who was president of uh, uh, Fordham when you were there? Father McGinley. Number three, who was president of Fordham? Father Monsignor McGinley. Uh, number uh, two, where is Fordham Hospital? Fordham Hospital is near Fordham University on Fordham Road. Uh, number three, how long is a nurse's course? Three years. Number two, what is a Nisei? Nisei is a Japanese American. Uh, Number uh, three, what is a yo-yo made from? It's made out of maple wood and uh, with an Egyptian fiber for strength. Okay, Carla. Uh, number two, can you show me your yo-yo finger? Well, it's usually the third finger. Always? Always, practically. Yeah. Number two, can you also tell me you were the only one who didn't answer Tom's question. What's the difference between being on staff and having staff? Well, being on staff is... Uh, you're under, you're actually, you have, you're on staff, you're the head staff. And uh, being in staff is you have someone over you. Number one, what is well, agoraphobia? Oh, well, I didn't I'm get I'm afraid we have to take anything. time to vote, if you don't mind, without consultation. <laughs> Once again, will you mark your ballot? And as before, vote for number one, number two, oh. or number three. Wow. Everybody all set here? Okay, sodium we pentothal have, uh, all administered. Jane, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I, I have no reason at all. I vote for number two. To me, it was between number one and number two, and I vote for number two. Okay, Don? I vote for number three, and I, too, have no reason at all for voting for number three. Kitty? 
I voted for number three because I didn't think number two answered Tom's question correctly at all. And number three said Father Monsignor, and it sounded more authentic. Okay, and Tom. I voted for number two. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to vote for uh, number one, but I took a turn for the nurse. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was really going to vote for number two right along, you know, because she didn't have a chance to answer my question wrong until Kitty asked her, and then she asked it wrong, answered it wrong too. So now I'm. Uh... All righty, there you are. Confused? Oh my! Let's find out and end the confusion right now as to which one of these three charming ladies is the real Women's World Yo-Yo Champion. So will the real Fushiko Asakawa please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Misa Ban. I'm a bookkeeping bookkeeper in New York City. Thank you. And number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do? My name is Yin Sun. I'm a singer, and I also work for Kudner Advertising Agency. Thank you. <laughs> now, this time, checking scores, you find there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Arid. Ladies, thanks so much. On your way out, you'll find a gift package of Carter's fine products waiting for you. Good night and good luck. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is William E. Potter. What is your name, please? My name is William E. Potter. What is your name, please? My name is William E. Potter. Once more with the copies of affidavits, if you will, panel, follow along with me. I, William E. Potter, am a Major General in the United States Army Corps of Engineers. I am a graduate of both West Point and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In 1956, I was appointed by President Eisenhower to my present post, in which I am responsible for the security, maintenance, and operation of the Panama Canal. I am Governor of the Canal Zone, and president of the Panama Canal Company, signed William E. Potter. <laughs> Three gentlemen all claiming to be William E. Potter, governor of the Panama Canal Zone. All seated and ready, gentlemen. We will start with Don Amici. Don? Number two, where is MIT? MIT is in Cambridge. Number uh, three, how many locks are in the canal? Three. Number uh, uh, three, what is the largest lock? The uh, Gaston lock <laughs> has three stages. Number one, where is Balboa? Balboa is at the Pacific end of the canal. Uh, number two, where is Cristobal? Cristobal is on the northwest part of the canal, the end of the canal. Northwest end? That's right, Caribbean. Uh, number three, what is the average rainfall? in the Panama Canal Zone? Well, uh, we get about 127 inches at the, um, on the Caribbean end, and um, about 68, 69 inches at the Pacific end. Uh, number two, uh, where is, uh, number one, where is Bal uh, Cristobal? Cristobal is at the Caribbean end of the canal. Uh, Kitty? Number one, who was Deleceps? Deleceps was a Frenchman who built the Suez Canal and started for the French. The Panama Canal. Number two, number two, if you were traveling from the Pacific into the Caribbean, uh, in which direction would you be traveling through the canal? Be traveling northwest. Northwest. Uh, number three, can you tell me what's the name of that place where they kiss all the girls at West Point? Well, they call it the uh, Kissing Rock on Flirtation Walk. Number one, uh, were you invited by the president to the White House uh, when you were given your present post? No. You didn't go to get it at the White House? No, ma'am. Um, number two, um, oh, I can't think of anything more to ask you. Tom Poston, please. Well, that's never happened to me before. It's the Panama Canal that did me in. Thank you, uh, Number three, which side of the river is MIT on? Well, that would be the west side of the Charles River Basin. 
Uh, number one, uh, in what direction is the nearest large university? Harvard. Harvard is west of MIT. Uh -huh. Thank you. Number two, what's the name of that river? Which river? I <laughs> <laughs> mean the Charles River? I was going to say the one that flows between Harvard and MIT. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, number three. What is the Fenway? The Fenway is a street in Boston. Number one, what is the Fenway? It's a street in Boston. Jane? Number two, what is the Fenway? <laughs> the street in Boston. Well, I guess it is, Tom. Um, number one, who is the Secretary of the Army? Wilbur Brucker. Number two, where is Ulster County? Ulster County? Yes. You mean the one over in Ireland? Where? The one in Ireland? No, I had in mind the United States. Ulster County, Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, number three, do you know where Ulster County is? It's on the west side of the Hudson River. Uh, number one, what is the monetary unit of exchange in the uh, Republic of Panama now? The Balboa. Balboa. Number uh, three, how much do they charge to go through the canal? Well, it depends on the tonnage of the ship. How do they rate it? Well, we have rather a complicated formula for it, but uh, uh, it's... Um, <coughs> based upon the what we call a measurement ton and yes. it's 90 cents per measurement ton which would mean that the average ship would pay between forty five hundred and five thousand dollars that's it once again time to vote panel with what information you have gleaned thus far will you kindly mark your ballot and vote for number one number two what? or number three oh. okay let me know when you've all marked <laughs> you all marked your ballot Tom, Kitty, Don, have you marked? Yes. Jane, have you marked? Yep. Okay, for whom did you vote this time? Well, number two didn't know where Ulster County was, and number three told me exactly. But this is awful tough. I think it's either number one or number three. I vote for number three, Howard. Okay, Don, your vote. I voted for number three, and I think they're all magnificently trained. I couldn't oh, tell fantastic. really. Kitty? I voted for number three on the basis of his knowledge of the uh, tonnage and how much it costs to go through the canal, although we hadn't asked that for number one. Tom, who do you think is the real one? I voted for number three. <laughs> You're either. They're either all wrong or all right tonight. Well, there we have it. Unanimous. First time tonight, first time in a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, that we've had all for one and one for all. Let's find out now whether we're all right or all wrong. How are you doing at home? Let's discover now as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the governor of the Panama Canal Zone. Will the real William E. Potter please stand up? <laughs> Boy, I never heard three people with such equal authority in their answers in my life as long as the show's been on. I'm saying uh, we're all wrong, two, we're all right, we're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, sir? My name is Jack McBride. I live in New York, and I'm a writer. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ah, number three, what about you, sir? Your name, please. My name is Frederick H. Lewis. I'm the executive director of the Herald Tribune Fresh Air Fund in New York. <laughs> well, they really threw you that time. That means, of course, it's very little to puzzle about adding up a score like that, because that's, you know, unanimous. Unanimous we pay. And, gentlemen, for the, the evening's visit, which I trust you have found a pleasant one, because we've enjoyed having you here, four times $250 from Arad for the nice round total of $1,000. <laughs> And we thank you for being with us. On your way out, you will find a year's supply of Rise Instant Lather for each of you. Keep smiling. Good night and good luck. Good night. <laughs> the governor of the Panama Canal has given us all keys to the Panama Canal and certificates to go with it. Tom has just mentioned that he thinks it probably only opens the first lock. Yeah. However... <laughs> It was fun being with you tonight, and I guess that's it. So, good night, panel. Good, good night, night, Bud. This is Bud Collier saying good night from Arid Cream Deodorant and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is the Mark Whitson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.